And I was like, no, bro, like it's techno. Like, no, it's just Benny Benassi, <laughs> you know? When he asked, it planted a seed, bro. Yeah. I was just like, can I make something like this? You know, like some like electronic music. It's a whole different scene, no? I mean, I'm the way I'm hearing it, opposed to como lo es la paisa scene, you know, the corrido scene, it's, it's completely different, no? And that right there sparked like a whole entire new path. And I was just like, oh, I'm gonna do merengue and EDM, you know? So I got excited about music again, bro. So I started picking up the guitar. Like it's important that you don't lose that. Mm -hmm. You don't, if it becomes just a job, you get bored of it. Exactly. Yeah. And then how do you even get mm. good at this shit? It's like you gotta fuck up so many times, bro. You know, like yeah, yeah I went yeah. through so many shitty deals and mm -hmm. like you know, I've met some people that I'm just like, damn, like I you know those people that they fucked me over, you know. But <laughs> people look at look at like for example, like okay, signing like a record deal, like oh don't do that, you know, nowadays it's like and yeah, nowadays there's more opportunities, right? You don't need to be signed to a label, now you can just do like independent. It works now because of streaming and all that. But it doesn't mean that like record labels aren't a bad idea. And I was telling him, first of all, I'm not playing ADC because I'm a DJ. I'm playing ADC mm. because of the music I make. Right? Like, no matter where I go, that, like, a lot of raza comes out. One of my favorite things to do is when I go to a festival, when I see a Mexican flag, like, I just go up to them. And, like, so one of the craziest images I ever got was um, I went, I played South Korea, and I played some cumbia out there, bro. Oh, wow. Everybody was getting down to it. Yeah, maybe I'll never get to see the full picture of how exactly, how, how well recognized my music is. But from what I do get to see, I'm just like... <risa> ¿Qué rollo? What's up, everybody? Aquí estamos nuevamente en un nuevo episodio de Así Pero Bien con mi pistolero número uno, el yeah. Nigelón de la Sierra. What's up, compa? Saludos. What's up, man? Aquí listos. Y en esta ocasión, we have a very special guest. This guy is a living legend. Huge. Uh -huh. Huge fucking megastar. Fucking has done some of the biggest stages in the world. I'm not even going to say United States. Or in the motherfucking world. We have... El compa de Oro in the house. The Oro. What's up, What's up bro? Oh, no, bro? Hey, gracias. Thank you for the invitation, bro. No, thank you for accepting, bro. Yeah, you're yeah, you're, you're the coming. one that's as busy as fuck traveling <laughs> the world, man. Uh, ¿Cómo te ha ido, man? Muy bien, bro. Gracias a Dios. You know, um, you know, my team, they've just been crushing it. And, uh, you know, my wife just keeps pushing me, you know. She just, you know, makes sure I wake up in the morning and make sure I'm up and going, you know. And uh, That's important, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Definitely. If you don't have that, it's, it's like yeah, fucking como you're que... Lost. Como que, yeah, it's, 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 so she's the one that puts it together for you. Yeah, man, she keeps me together, you know? Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm lucky to have her. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, and then my team, bro, like, I have a really great team, and it's growing, and, you know, the merch team, and, you know, the marketing team, and pues todo, bro, like, you know, the tour team and everything, you know? So it's, like, it's exciting to see that. It, it, it inspires me and, and vice versa. So it's, we're just, like, a, a machine, you know? Y para mí eso es lo que... You know, I value that the most in my life. You know? A well-oiled machine. No, I've seen you guys work, and and I've I've, I've had the pleasure of of uh, of being on stage with you, man. Las dos veces que hemos estado contigo and that collab, uh, man. That bro, collab. oh that collab, bro, man. Thank that you. Was that, thank that, you. Guys. That was, was badass, bro. Thank you for, I, stay, I hear that shit everywhere, dude. That's it, bro. Yeah, no, Damn, well, that that you know that song means means a lot to me, bro. Esa canción cuando lo, cuando pues cuando llegué aquí yo no yo no sabía I didn't know I didn't know that it was your studio, bro. Yeah. And I remember when I saw you, I was like, damn, this feels familiar. <laughs> you know? And then I went, cuando fui al baño vi la foto and I was just yeah. like, oh fuck, dude. Yeah. That's what I told you. I was like, bro, let me remix one of your songs, bro. Dude. Let me like, you know. That's so insane. um, thank you for the opportunity, bro. And no, like no, for me, it's. So you have to come here, then. Yeah, vino, vino con mi compa Seth. Now you came with Seth. Yeah, oh. with Seth, este, and and um, because Seth had had rented out the studio. And um, he told me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Dioro. And I was like, I know I've heard that name before. So I asked my daughter because my daughter was all, you know, into that music. Oh, that's a crazy yeah. story. That's a crazy yeah. story. So then, so then my daughter was like, Dad, don't you remember? She goes, I recorded uh, Coros for, for one of his songs. I'm like, oh, shit. This was years ago when oh, she was wow. in high school. Mm -hmm. Now she's, she's well out of college, you know. She's already going yeah. for her master's. She, but she was, she, she had done Coros on one of, one of his songs. And, and when she told me, I was like, oh shit i go he's coming down today and she's like oh my god dad she's like he's, <laughs> That's he's cool. like she was like he, if she was back then he was famous she's like now he's really famous and i was like oh shit so then yeah when he showed up I was like oh shit that's the owner that's fucking badass i go he's in the dope. studio yeah but catching on se se organico. that was like the most organic way of doing a duet bro like it just blossomed into a duet you know hell yeah and you were already a fan of voices 
Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah bro. Da, hell yeah. Good. I mean, I, man, my dad too. That's why I brought him <laughs> on one of the sessions. I was like, Dad, you got you to come watch how they record and everything. Oh, that's so awesome, yeah. dude. That's so awesome, man. So you've you've traveled the world, bro. Yeah. Did, I mean, how, how, how did how did you get into this, bro? How, how was how yeah, was so, how did this happen? So, you know, well, music. I grew I grew up with music. Come okay, yeah. like I don't remember starting one day. Yeah. It's just I just grew into it. Um, so music has always been there, and then when it comes to me DJing, bro, like that, I remember I used to go with my dad. He used to like DJ, and he used to play guitar, and like different like you know fiestas like bolas, quinceañeras, bautizos, and all that. And I would go with him, you know, I'd help him carry the the speakers and stuff. And um, yeah, bro, so kind of like I, I I can tell you specifically how I kind of started doing it on my own. Yeah. So. It was around like June where a lot of graduation parties were happening. A lot of like Mexican families would have like, oh, like the daughter graduated or whatever. So they would have a family party and I was obviously I would go. And since I was kind of like that age too, like 14, 15, I was a little younger. I knew kind of like what they wanted to listen to. So like for like 30 minutes, I would play more of like hip hop, you know, the while the family took a break. She had her friends there. And then, you know, she came up to me saying like, hey, like I'm having my own party tomorrow. Same, same right here, same place. Uh, can you come and DJ that? So that's how I slowly started doing it on my own, oh, you know? Shit. And uh, yeah, bro. So that kind of like, that was always separate to what I was doing at home though, what I was making music. Cause I was making like reggae and stuff like that. You oh know? shit. So okay. it wasn't until one time, bro, I was at a house party and I was playing like some techno, some, some, that's what I called it back then. Right. Some, some techno. And uh, this drunk guy comes up to me. He's like, Hey, He's like, did you make this right here? Did you make this beat? And I was just like, no, bro, this techno. I only know how to play instruments. I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know how to make techno and shit like that. And I was like, no, bro, like it's techno. Like, no, it's this Benny Benassi, you know. <laughs> and then uh, I always used to go to this guitar center, all right. But that what he, what he asked, it planted a seed, bro. Yeah. I was just like, can I make something like this? You know, like some like electronic music. And uh, I used to go to this guitar center all the time down the street. And uh, I remember I went up to the guy and I told him, I was like, hey, where are the guitars to make techno? You know? And he was just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, wow. And um, he said, like, oh, like, you want to go in that room? And I had never gone in that room. You know, I was like, it looked like that, bro. Like, a bunch yeah. of shit like that. Mm. And uh, so I walked in there and I was like, I didn't, I just only saw keyboards, you know? Like, and there was like some like pads and stuff. And then I, you know, I was fucked around a little bit. And, 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 and yeah, bro, like, I was like, okay, cool. But how do I get this recorded? Like, where do you know? And that's when the guy was like, he helped me out. He was just like, oh, all this stuff's done on computers, you know? You can do little eight track machines. You know, or like, or you can just go straight into softwares. And uh, yeah, I didn't have a computer back then. So I would just like, you know, eventually, I eventually we ended up getting a computer. My dad won it in a contest, bro, with Saulo Gigante. Oh, oh, <laughs> crazy, bro. <What> Saulo <laughs> Gigante. Yeah, bro. I remember I, it was funny because I wanted, I wanted, <laughs> it's random, <huh? laughs> Hey, but so, okay, guys. I remember I wanted my dad to win second place, bro, because because second place won a bike, yeah. you know, and first place won a computer. I was like, I want a bike, bro, and uh, he ended up winning. But I ended up becoming the computer. I was that's fucking win. badass. That's cool. a story, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, huh? So so yeah, bro. So I ended up. He he said that there was like a demo because they were like sixty to like ninety bucks back then. I was crazy from it, you know. So he was like, "There's this demo, bro. Just install it, and then once it like if you could use it for fifteen minutes, uninstall it, and just keep reinstalling it, you know." Just keep so that's what I did, bro. So every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes I would uninstall it, bro. Shit. And that's how I used it. You know, like I was okay, bro. I was like, I don't I was like, I wasn't complaining. I was just happy yeah. I was able to make music. So yeah, bro. And then little by little, I kind of just saved some money. And then that specific software cost like 30 <clears> bucks. <throat> and then I, I was able to download it once. And then uh yeah, bro, ever since then I kind of started putting together uh these beats. And eventually I finally got the guts, I built the guts to to actually play some of it at some of the some of the 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 Events DJ Las Tocadas yeah. que estaba haciendo, you know? What was the software called? So it's called Acoustical Mixcraft. Oh, okay. And that's Mixcraft. You, were, you were able to put different sounds and Yeah, so like we had an old keyboard, bro, and like, you know, those old keyboards come with really corny sounds, bro. Yeah. yeah. And like and then and then later I found out that the software comes with sounds. So I was able to kind of oh, like shit. they came with loops and I was able to cut that up and stuff and like yeah, you know, I started to learn the software. I was like, mm. "Oh, there's way I don't I don't need the keyboard no more. I can just I can draw it in and I was like, okay, you know, so it's like yeah, little by little, bro. And then, then um I remember it went from like DJing house parties to like some of these guys that would throw these house parties. He was like, "Oh, I want to do a club, you know?" Oh shit. So, um <clears throat> the, what they needed help with was promoting. So, I was like, as long as I handed out so many flyers, they would let me have a set, 
you know? Oh, shit. So I really wanted to make a song like, like you know, it's like a Benny Benassi back in the day. And, uh, yeah, bro, I, I like the fact that they would have me open, you know, when nobody was there because I wasn't embarrassed to try my music in the oh, speakers. Oh, so it kind of mm. helped. Yeah, was, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, damn, this song sucks. I got to put more bass in it, yeah. you know? So it's kind of like that's how it kind of started. And, yeah, bro, I started releasing my stuff, you know, once I felt the comp, once I had the confidence, I started releasing it on this we on website called waxdj.com. And uh, it doesn't exist no more, but um yeah and then that and then soundcloud came about and then that's when i started getting a lot of followers and the club saw that like oh if we book this guy he'll bring like 20 people he'll bring 50 people then he'll bring 100 people oh, shit. you know just grew like that it's a whole different it's a whole different scene no i mean but you know, i'm the way i'm hearing it uh, uh como el, o sea, opposed to como lo es la, la paisa scene you know the, the the corrido scene it's it's completely different no? like, a Where group. You, like in, in the groups they don't have to bring no no les dicen que traigan Invitados, no? Pues no, like yo sepa, it's, it's like a whole different... It's a whole uh, different... Niche, it's a different, not niche, but like different perspective of how you approach to become that. So they make they make you work yeah. for your set, como quien dice, yeah. no? Well, yeah, yeah, not not like, no, nah, it's not like, not like a hundred invitados. Yeah. But like, if they book me, like a hundred people are going to show up. Yeah, yeah. these people yeah, yeah. want to show up, so I'll sell a oh. hundred tickets. Yeah, you sell a hundred tickets, but yeah, 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 actually, yeah actually. for sure. So I remember, mm -hmm. like, I had to also find out how many people I was bringing because like, you know, yeah, I didn't know I was bringing, like if they booked me that 50 people for sure were going to see me, you know, mm -hmm. I was just hyped that people were going to see me period, yeah. you know, but I didn't realize it's like, yo, like a lot of people are here for you. Like, look how valuable you are. You know, it wasn't until my homie told me, he was like, bro, like you're making the club some money. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh shit. And he opened my eyes price, you know? uh -huh. and then he told me, he was like, yeah, bro. He's like, you know, you're right now. I was playing for free, you know? And yeah. uh, I just wanted to set. I was just, you know, yeah. He's like, nah, bro. You're making the club some money. Make sure they kick you down some cash, you know. So I was like, okay. How, do you, how yeah. does that ha like? How does that happen? So what do you think is what was working for you that they created that fuss? So uploading my music on SoundCloud was what really, you know, because Viral. yeah, yeah. So um, you know, and plus I would hand out a lot of demos at like house mm -hmm. parties, and like that's how people would go and find me on SoundCloud if they wanted to hear more of my music. So a lot of the people that I had were local fans because of the, mm -hmm. the way I was promoting it. Word of mouth. Though. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and like people were just like, oh, this DJ, is, you know, he's, he, he's cool. He makes he actually makes this music. And, you know, so that's how it was very local before oh, I started I expanding more towards. I went towards San Bernardino first, you know, back when they had like Hudson and Gotham. And that was a whole scene, you know, and then I, I, I started switching over to L.A. depending on where I was promoting. Because from clubs, I went to bigger events. There was this company called Fresh Entertainment, and they used to they used to do events at the Pico Sports Arena. Okay, you know. So I remember I told them I was like, "Yo, like I'll hand out, you know, I'll hand out like twenty thousand flyers, you know, if you guys give me a set, you know." Yeah. So like, and they were down, you know. Like I was really cool with them, and like me and my boy actually ended up doing a lot of events. I remember I I would go out to Coachella that same night, come back into Hollywood, do all the nightclubs, and yeah, bro, like that's how I was getting a lot of the sets. At the same time, that's how I was getting exposure. It was a lot of grind, though. Yeah, it was. A lot of definitely, grind. bro. Yeah. Definitely. And like, and I never realized how much I was doing it until I look back. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I busted my ass off. Yeah. But I didn't feel like it because I was passionate. Yeah. You know? And you weren't like, doing it for the money. Exactly, bro. And yeah, like, yeah. I think that's why, too, because I wasn't really chasing the money. I never really, I never become, became, I don't want to say poisoned, you know, but I, it was never like, it was never like, oh, fucking money, you know, it was just like, I, yeah. get, I get to do this, you know? Yeah, so drive. I think, and I think that's why I think music ended up taking care of me because I was kind of like taking care of music, you know, making sure that like I was doing it. Doing it that, for the love. Yeah, bro. And I think that's why it. I got, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's why I got blessed with so much because I wasn't like, you know? It, it definitely, I, I think it makes a difference because... When when you start doing it for the money, I think you set yourself up for failure, for disappointment. Yeah, and and yeah. your your relationship with music changes, you know, Definitely. because that and I think that's that's something that I you know I went through where like I I obviously my music became a business, yeah. right? And that's what I really mm -hmm. thought for so long, but in reality, it wasn't that my music became business. It's just that my music allowed for business to also step in the picture, where I started focusing more on business and like my music kind of me and my music started like growing apart you know yeah. where like if i was gonna go to the studios it, it had to be worth it you know where it's just yeah. like that was never how it used to be i mm -hmm. went to the studio because yeah. i i just i wanted to you, wanted you know to and like now it, it, and then eventually became became like if i'm gonna go to the studio it's i have to make a song i have to back then i used to just 
show up just you know if i make something great if not yeah, well at least yeah. i got to spend a day in the studio yeah so for the longest time i really blamed like oh like i don't i, I don't love music no more but it wasn't that bro it was just that i became so distant from music so you know it wasn't until uh, i you know i i got lucky to travel and tour the world and you know i was busy and i had shows and you know where where i kind of needed a break you know, I needed a break from all that. And I remember I went home for like the first time for a long, like, like I think I went home for like a month. And um, I kind of wanted to take a step back from music, bro. And like, and everything that I was doing, because I was like, you know what? Like, I miss my family. I miss all that. So I got to go to some family parties, bro. And then um, I was also going through a period in my life where I was like, okay, what else do I have to offer music? Yeah. You know, come okay. I already did my rounds. I already did the festivals. I already did that a couple times in a row already. Because <clears throat> it's like, damn, can okay, I make yeah? You know, like what else do I have to offer? So that's when I went home and I got to go to some family parties. You know, and like I met some like primos from Mexico and stuff. And like I, I got connected with my culture, bro. Yeah. yeah. And that's when I was like, damn, I have a shitload to offer music, bro. I was like, my whole, my whole, where my background, Your you know, background. where I come from, you know. And that right there sparked like a whole entire new path, right? And and and. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to do merengue and EDM, you know? So I got excited about music again, bro. So I started I started picking up the guitar, like, without need, like, having to, needing, like, feeling like I needed to. Mm -hmm. I just, because I simply wanted to, right? Yeah. I was excited for this new path. And that right there, like, I, my relationship with music started coming back, you know? Where I was telling business, I was like, hold up. You know, yeah. like right like, now I'm going to make a song. Like, I'm not even going to send it to you guys. I'm just going yeah, yeah. to make it for me. If I like, you know, if I, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like, that's how it slowly be I started falling back in love with music like that. And that's when I realized I was like, yo, music's always been there. You mm. know, it's just the way I approached it, you know, for so long. It's like, well, now it's like you got now. And now that I have that relationship again, bro, I, I, I'm very, I, it's precious to me, you know, mm -hmm. um, I whenever I feel like it's becoming way too much work, I'm just, I always like say, like, yo, yo, actually, you know what? Like, hold on. You know, take a little break. Yeah, like, and, and there's different ways to take a break. You know, where it's just like, I'm gonna book some sessions on my own, where like I'm not even gonna tell management about it. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna just do this on my own, and like, so that way when I'm in the studio, it's like no one knows I'm here. It's just me. You know, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, where like sometimes I'll, I'll go to the studio, and then management will be like, "Oh, how was the studio session? Like, did you come up with anything? You know, it's kind of like no expectations, but it's their job. Right? Yeah. It's their job. Yeah, yeah. You know? Music like, was like wrong a, with it, like an obligation. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, and um. You know, there's, there's like, I, like I said, there's room for that. But like, for the most part, I have to, as a musician, I have to remember that, like, uh, that the, my most important thing is to, 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 to make sure me and music, we, you know, we're, we're in love with each other, you know, yeah. and like, and that's, in that's perfect so perfect harmony, per right? Exactly, bro. <laughs> no pun so like, where if <laughs> I show up cool. to, yeah, <laughs> exactly. When, when, <laughs> if I show up to the studio, it's because I want to, you know, and like, and that, that, that kind of having that passion is what got me here in the first place. Yeah. You know? And I don't want to lose that. Yeah. That 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 right there, I think, is everybody's That's fear, you know, losing the the that spark. <laughs> Michelada delivery. Oh, hell to yeah. I remember these Micheladas. Hey. What the hell yeah! You, Thank baby. you so much. Muy bien. How are you? How are you? <laughs> well, pues ya que aprovechando, pues. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I went off. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the Michelada mix. I don't know. Este, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was perfect. yeah. Damn. Thank you so much. Micheladas. Uh, Esa michelada es traída por... <laughs> Salud. Salud. Cheers, Salud. guys. Muchas Salud. gracias. Muchas gracias. Thanks for coming Salud. to the podcast. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty fire right there. Oh. Wow. I love micheladas, Damn. bro. It's hard to find a michelada like this in Mexico. I know, right? Because well, cause it, over there it, is different. Right? If you go to, if you go to, uh, este, bueno, yeah, it depends where you go. Porque, y luego, they have different names. Allá la michelada es como con puro limón, ¿no? Limón, puro, puro limón. limón, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one is a chelada. Adelita. O, o, chel, no, ¿cómo se dice? Pero no, yeah, pero la michelada allá en México es, es con puro limón. Sí, sí. Y yeah. luego, y luego a esto le, le dicen, este, chabelita. O, chabelita. Chabelita, chabelita, right? Chabelita, chabelita, chabelita. Yeah, yeah. Um, I said like adelita, ¿no? Pues, yeah, yeah, chabelita. Yeah, something like that. If you're listening, if you're mirando México, es una chabelita. Están aquí en Estados Unidos es una michelada. Entonces, I mean, you can always just tell them con clamato too, and they don't know. Yeah, con clamato. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're talking about um about the love for music, about your your relationship with music, about how mm. it's important that you don't lose that. Mm -hmm. if you don't if it becomes just a job, mm -hmm. you get bored of it. Exactly. You, you know, and I think that's the same. You know, once I think about think about that in a broader spectrum, 
I think that can apply to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like say a painter. You know, yeah. obviously a painter is going to start painting because it's their curiosity and then it right. becomes their passion once they become good at it. And then if they start getting paid for it, then it becomes a job. See, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like, mm -hmm. that can also happen to someone like that too. You know, and I feel mm -hmm. like that's that's why like, when I talk to uh, when I talk to other artists that like don't do music but they you know they do they do art they they you know they uh, they draw or some shit like that and like it's the same thing you, you know, know? Mm -hmm. so calling video as a video creator because mm -hmm. you, sometimes you want to get paid or sometimes you do it for the art exactly I mean, exactly. Lo mismo, si, si. exactly you know so it's yeah. just a make sure make sure you hold on to that relationship you right. know and 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 as long as you're aware that music or or art whatever the art you do and business are two separate things yeah Oh, you know, definitely. the two separate things, and I was confusing them as the same thing, so I mm -hmm. kind of started to hate music when it's like it wasn't music fault, you know. Pero tenía que pasar, no? Ese yeah, exactly. So you, can you know, I had to take value. a step back and yeah. just, yo, 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 you know. I think that also yeah. happens when you, when you take on too many roles. Oh, like God, I, I feel definitely. like, like when I'm sure that problem maybe for you finished when you when you started getting your team, where you didn't have to worry about exactly, you know, the business uh, end of it. I would. Dude, stretch that, myself so yeah. thin. It's yeah. like you're thinking about making music, but you're also thinking about how much you're gonna charge, and or who's gonna charge, or who mm. are you gonna charge, or they haven't paid, or uh, it's just you get overwhelmed. Huh? Yeah, like, it, exactly. it, it definitely becomes overwhelmed. But once you have that team, I think that structure, I think that 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 alleviates all that fucking pressure. Definitely, you know? bro. You know, and like, you know, I remember, and a lot of a lot of people, like young young, uh, like artists and djs they always ask me you know like how do you get to the point where like you can have a manager like when do i know i need a manager right people yeah. always ask me when like that's how do good, i that's a good question people always <laughs> ask me yeah question. how do i get a manager and i always tell them well like do you have things that need to get managed <laughs> like do you need to be managed you know wow. and um i get it you know like someone wants a manager because a manager can bring opportunities right but obviously a manager is not just gonna give those opportunities to anyone you know so it's kind of like i always do try to give them the advice versus like look first of all do you need to be managed? You know, do you mm -hmm. need things to be managed? Like, do you have, do you have like, <laughs> like manageable things? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the brutally honest answer, you know, where like, if, if they do was well, like, okay, well, you know, one, one of the things I always say is, is, is the, the main focus should always be like, Hey, if you want to go down that route where you, you become part of the industry and you get managers and lawyers and all that, well, the first thing you want to do is you want to grow your, your, you know, one of the biggest things is your audience. You know, because your audience becomes the people you're going to sell your music to. Your audience becomes mm -hmm. the people that are going to buy your tickets. You know, because once you have that, you know, that's value. You know, yeah, yeah. say your audience is 100,000 people. You know, let's say 100,000 people just on the West Coast. It's like, okay, boom, right away. You know, you're, that's value to, to an agency. That's value to a promoter. That's value to, to a label that you want to sell your music to. So, you know, you start breaking it down like that. And then, you know, sometimes it's hard to grasp when you've mm -hmm. never really thought about those things. You know, but people like us, it's like that's 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 general knowledge. Yeah, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. knows that, but people outside of this don't. So, like when I start talking to them like that, they're just like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's like it's hard. You know, I didn't learn it overnight. You know, you okay. learn, and then oh yeah, it takes years. Of and then how do you even get good at this? It's like you gotta fuck up so many times, bro. You know, like you, you know that. Go, yeah, yeah, I went through so many shitty deals, and like <clears> you know. I've met some people that I'm just like, damn, like, I, you know, those people, they, they fucked me over, you know, but <laughs> They're lessons. You, you have to go through that, yeah. bro, you know, yeah. and, and, and it, this is one of those things just like where you learn, the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. Yes, just don't make sure. the mistake of, of signing that contract that's going <laughs> to fuck you, you know, like, oh, yeah, you got to make dude. sure, like, if you're going to do anything like that, you got to make sure you have a lawyer, bro. I always tell that everybody that comes through here, you know, I mean, I, I, I sign artists too and stuff and I always mm -hmm. tell them when I give them the contract, I always send it to them. I say, read it. And or have somebody that knows mm -hmm. about contracts read it mm -hmm. and do not sign this contract until Without you knowing. know until what you know you're everything signing. what everything means. Yep. Yeah, I've done the some, same thing. Yeah. Some people will be like, Oh, right here it says that you're gonna get a million dollars if you but it doesn't say that. But the, but then you, if you don't read it, you'll be like, Okay, fuck, I'll sign it. You know, and we've all made that mistake, man. We've all yeah, made that mistake. Me too, you know? me too. You know, and like one thing I learned is that like, you know, people people look at look at like for example like okay signing like a record deal like oh don't do that you know nowadays it's like, and yeah nowadays there's more opportunities right you don't need to be signed to a label now you can just do like independent it works now because of streaming and all that you know but it doesn't mean that like record labels aren't a bad idea you know as long as everything's in writing and as long as you, it's it you're happy and they're happy you know 
As long as it's something but you agree on. It's a relationship, right? It's a relationship as well. And like, is it what you want? Is yeah. it what you need? Exactly. And can you provide what they need, what they exactly. want? Exactly. And if you meet them, if you find a middle ground, sign the deal, okay, you know, good luck, you know, mm -hmm. like, and go for it. You know, that's, that's my thing. When the first record deal I signed, like, I didn't really know what the hell I was getting myself into. Oh. Until later, I realized I was like, "Oh shit!" Like I need to. There's, there's a lot that I need How to deliver. How old were you when the first time? Well, I was 2014, 2014 or 15 when I signed. But the truth was, you know, when they would ask me, "Are you happy with this?" In my head, I would just be like, "Yeah, yeah," without even really no, fucking being honest. Actually, I don't know what the hell this is, really. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but luckily, bro, luckily it was a great label. Great label, you know, it's Ultra Records. That's mm -hmm. amazing, amazing partnership. They opened so many doors for me. You know, they 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 blew up my song Five Hours. They put Chris Brown on it, oh, and they supported amazing. they supported everything that I handed over to them. You know, it was just on my end. Was like, oh my god, the amount of stuff I needed to hand over. You know, it's yeah. like oh, I okay. I agreed that I would do it, but before realizing exactly what I was mm -hmm. agreeing to. You know, but and then once I realized, I was like, okay, you know what. Pilas because I actually want to fulfill this record deal. I want to deliver everything I can. I told him, okay, I know I owe you one more album, so I, I you know, I, I put together my oral album, and um, I delivered it, and they, you know, everything it worked just as it said on the contract, you yeah. know. So, so th that's what that's what I mean by it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not like no, it just means like if you have to know what you're agreeing to, like you said, right. and, and it's sometimes like um, what we we're talking about earlier. I think it's um, it all goes back to uh, it makes you. Just focus on your part or your end, which is make music and the label will take care of the Yes. All that business. Labels, label, labels are a powerhouse. They yeah. know they bring you know, Lotra brought me so many opportunities. They were always just like, If you need writers, mm -hmm. let me know. You know, let me know. Like and they always provided like writers and studios and stuff like that, you know. So that's like awesome. that was you know, that was that that's one of the best things that a label can provide. Dude, for me, <laughs> fun fucking funny story. My first contract I ever signed for the label, I thought I was getting them, right? Because um we had put out a couple of albums and they started doing really well. So they're like, hey, we need to get some money now. So then the guy says, how much you got, how much you thinking, you know? So me and Mariano had already fucking talked. We had discussed. We're like, Fuck, we got to get them good. So he's like, how much you thinking? I said, how about $6,000? And he was like, <laughs> deal. I was like, <laughs> no. my man, I was like, sucker. <laughs> now that I think I'm like, que pendejo yo. He was like. That's like I said, you know, we didn't know. It's a we learning were, lesson, bro. We were naive. We mm -hmm. we thought we were getting them for six thousand dollars. Like, no, wow. like, <laughs> fuck, bro. Like, no matches. For yeah. example, in el regional, you know, like I'm so I'm well. We're used to like if an artist has certain elements, you know, puede tener carisma, puede tener ángel, puede tener algo. For someone like you as a DJ, qué elementos tienes que tener for you to be a great? ¿Cómo resaltas? Like, how do you stand out? You know, between others. So, okay, well, in, in this world, there's there's a difference between a producer and a DJ, right? Um, you know, a lot of people always ask me, oh, how do I become a DJ like you so I could play EDC? And I always tell them, first of all, I'm not playing EDC because I'm a DJ. I'm playing EDC mm -hmm. because of the music I make, you know, because anybody, yeah, like, it's, 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 it's not, I mean, it's not easy to be a DJ, but it's a lot, a lot more simple. Right. Right. Um, but then when it comes to producing music, you know, like that's where you have to get in the studio and learn how to make make your own music from scratch, you know. And um, that's what no basically got me on these lineups, you know, where mm -hmm. it's like it's, um, the people are going because of my music that I made. That you created. Yeah, because trust me, my DJ skills are very simple, bro. I'm yeah. just mixing one <laughs> song to the next, next song, next song. It's I'm just mixing the, yeah, the beginning and the end of songs. That's it. Right? Yeah. As a DJ, I'm a super simple DJ, bro. I'm not I'm not up there scratching, fucking putting the turntable on my head, and I'm not doing nothing crazy, bro. Right? I'm not like it's not my DJ skills that are putting me on those stages. It's the music, the music. The music, yeah, the music you're making. So that's one thing I make really clear to a lot of the people that ask me for advice. Um and as far as what separates me, I mean right now I feel like, you know, there's a there's a lack of a lot of Latin in, 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 in EDM. You know, I mean, it's growing. It's growing. We're having we're, there's a bunch of new artists, and um, you know, I slowly, slowly growing. But I feel like right now, that's what's cool. Right? Like no matter where I go, that like a lot of rasa comes out. You know, like um, it's really it's it's just one of my favorite things to do is when I go to a festival, uh, um, you know, and I see a Mexican flag, like I just go up to them and like turns I've out that, that they're there. Yeah, that's they're just crazy. there yeah. to see me. You know, like and that's really fucking. That's so cool. And it makes me feel muy orgulloso, bro, like to see sure. like the raza come out, you know? I, I see that about you, bro. And I think that's one of the reasons, too, that, that the raza is so uh, supportive of your career. Porque you're very fucking 
you embrace you embrace your fans like oh, nobody bro. else bro like I, I see you going into the crowd and people lose their shit bro they see mm. you they're like but this guy's right here you know and <laughs> not a lot of people you know there's a lot of you know we won't say this but there's a lot of rock star djs out there you know yeah that yeah. will never take the time you know, to do funny, that shit. Bro, i don't think you know so i've come to the conclusion conclusion that i don't think i'm ever going to allow myself well i don't even like like I get excited, bro. When I when I know there's fans, I'm just like, oh my god, they're fucking here to see me, bro. Yeah. And that that just that's in my nature, bro. Right. So I sometimes I question myself, like, how does someone know that and like say, fuck them, I'm not gonna go say hi. You know, it's sure. just like I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a way of thinking that might, but but that's not my way of thinking. And you know, Something sometimes actually. my team they remind me, it's like, hey, don't forget, bro. You can't just go out in the crowd like that because. Oh. Um, the last time I did that was uh, was here in LA at the Torch. I ended up doing another mm. one with this Laguna Armado. Yeah. Same venue. And I remember I told that girl, I was like, follow me, fool, follow me, you know? And I <laughs> snuck away from Eden. I snuck away from my tour manager, right? And I had to sneak away because I know my tour manager wouldn't let me. He bro. wouldn't let you. But I was feeling good. I was like, hell no, bro. Like, you know, it's pura raza. That's everybody's <laughs> Mexican here, bro. Because it's Laguna Armado and me, and it's yeah. Mexican international soccer team. Oh, wow. It's like everyone's Mexican, bro. I was like, of course I got to go out there, bro. For sure. So I went out there. Man, chaos, bro. Chaos. He had to tell Eden, bro, we got to come save us, bro. <laughs> oh, We're in the oh, back. Oh. Like, no, and, and it got worse and worse. because More more people started, you know, going for pictures and stuff. And I was just having a good time, bro. I was just like, this is crazy, you know. But, you know, it's it's still, there's things that can happen, you know, that like, not like, it's not necessarily safe. So it's like, you know, some, you know, he got a little upset, but it makes sense because it's like, it, 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 it does Safety. get tough. It gets tough, and like you know, sometimes my team need that they 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 say, hey, you know, we get it. You want to be out there, but sometimes yeah. you just you just can't. You, just you know, it's funny because I heard I heard that uh, Taylor Swift, for instance, like she does that when she reads tweets and she goes sings to weddings when they tell her to sing. I feel that's that they have that has a big impact as an artist because you you leave a big impact. That, I feel you like know, yeah. One of my favorite things is is when when I like when I look at them. Uh, in the crowd, right? In the crowd and like say for example they do a little sign or a hard sign mm -hmm. and I do it for them too, right? And then like they'll go like that and I do that too. And they'll see that I'm copying everything they do. So for a moment they realize They're I'm connected. actually looking at them, you know? Mm -hmm. And um and mm -hmm. I remember okay, so the reason I do that is because I remember I went to go see like one of my idols name's Tiesto. I went to come I see I saw him here at uh Elements of Life when when the B when BMO used to be sports arena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, bro, he pointed in my direction. And in my head, he pointed at me, bro. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, bro. He pointed. At, I'm sure he yeah. pointed at someone else, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it made me feel like he saw me, you know? So because of that, because of that, I can I can still feel it today, bro. There's a connection there. There's a connection, right? I can still feel that moment. There's a part of me that can feel a part of that moment. And... And now I see how easy it is to make something like that happen. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is just look at someone and like... You make somebody's day. Yeah. And like, no me cuesta nada, bro. You know, yeah. like, so like, what doesn't cost me nothing, bro. So I'll do that like 20, 30 times in one set. You know, I just want to let them know, you know, that's like, hey, I'm actually looking at you. You know, sure. like, I'm, you know, we're connected, you, yeah. bro. And like, for me, it, like I said, no me cuesta nada, but to them, it means it's everything. You know, and they're always gonna day. remember that. Yeah, yeah. You oh, yeah. Know? yeah and it's so mind. cool when like they when, when I finally get them to realize that I'm looking at them because the next thing they do is they always tell all their friends. Yeah, he's looking at us, and then I like <laughs> that's when you know, that's crazy. and it's so cool because it's like, you know, maybe I just turned their whole day around, you know, like where I just made it just a little extra special, you know, like yeah. where they go like, damn, I'm so glad I came to see Dioro. Exactly. exactly. It's like he actually I got to see him. He, he actually looked me. at me too. You know, and that's that. That, 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 that fan connection, know that. Yeah, that. bro, and like that's what mm -hmm. like, it goes back to. Like, you know what? Like, it's crazy because I don't think I'll ever get tired of that. Why would I get tired of that? What does it's not like? <clears throat> it doesn't cost me nothing. You know, definitely. So, I think that's a uh, a reason you have success because you have that mentality. Yeah, I definitely. You know, you know what? For sure. You know, a lot of people. They, 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 they. I mean, it's known on the internet too that like it's the humble artists and the the artists that are more approachable, the artists that aren't dicks, those are the ones that people like. It's obvious, you know? And if you are a dick, at least pretend to be nice, bro. <laughs> you, tell you, that, you know, at least pretend to be nice. Like, oh, Go picture, yeah, they're like, fuck. Yeah, take some, take some photos with the fans, you know? Right, don't, like, yeah, it's right. crazy how some people, I've seen artists like, look, I understand when they're tired. Oh, yeah, for sure. I get that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I get yeah, that yeah. because sometimes I'm just like, damn, I'm really tired. Like, I'm going to look so ugly in these photos. Yeah. Fuck it, you know, whatever, you know. I'm like, I was so I could just woke up from a from an airplane ride, yeah. you know. <laughs> and like, I don't care, you know, whatever. I look like, and there's so many photos out there where I look like shit. I don't care, bro, because 
that's the only time, the only chance they're going to ever get to get a photo with me. And that's how yeah. I always think about it. Uh, you know, it's just like, no, I don't like to turn down photos because that's probably the only chance they're ever going to get, you yeah. know? So it's like, I like to uh, uh, I always say yes. For you know, sure. unless like it gets super crazy, I always tell my team, it's like, it's your job to get me out of there. I'm not going to yeah. say don't know the photo, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You start calling out names, uh, random names. Hey, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, how many times have I told you? I was like, look, bro, I'm going to be out there. He's like, how long do you want to be out there? I was just like, you decide. I'm, I'm going to, I remember, bro, I remember one time in El Paso, I stayed for three and a half hours after my show. Oh, fuck. I, uh. cause, and my thing was just like, hey, <laughs> if you're down away from me, I'll wait for you, bro. And I waited for everybody that was there you know and i remember i told the security guards and everybody there i was just like hey like are you guys okay to do this because you know they were trying to go home yeah, too you know and uh they stayed too man they were just like yo we saw that what you did and i was that was really fucking cool uh -huh. you know i was just like honestly it was really cool that you guys stayed because yeah, i know sure. you know like i'd be pissed if like, fuck, i'm trying to go, right, to go. <laughs> exactly bro but like you know a lot of the people like someone not on that bro and especially when like when they see that you know they see that and like you know for me, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll, many shows, I'll stay and, and take photos whenever I get the opportunity, you know? And, like, sometimes we got to go straight to the airport, you know? We're just like, okay, cool. Well, I'm still going to go take photos. Yeah. You have, it's your job to get me out of there, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you'll you'll see that happen a lot, bro. It's I'm, I'm, I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's definitely a blessing, bro, to be able to do this. And, 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 and for somebody, I always think the same way. Like, like, they actually like something that I do. You know, they, yeah, they, something that I fucking I trip like, out. You know, yeah, this is something that I do, and they like it that much that they're here. Exactly. They paid their ticket, you know, to get into to watch to watch the show, and and so yeah, you know, se merecen una foto. You know that that's that's. I think that right there, como esto, like that, uh, even that little connection when you're on stage and and you say hi to somebody, they they're gonna go home and say, "Fuck, I was on stage. Yeah. That was a badass show." And plus, he said hi and that you yeah. like that's that's badass, bro. La neta. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely like the perks of this. Yeah, you know the extra connections you can make because, you know, it wasn't until I always thought you know this was a hobby turned into a career and like oh I'm lucky, bro. Until you know, there's no luck. People, that's not luck, pe bro. when people like come up to you and they cry and and then you <clears> realize, <throat> bro, that you're not just making music, bro. You're like connecting with these people on a personal level. And um, I think my sense of responsibility exploded when when like you know there was this guy i remember it was in texas he came out to me and he said hey i'll be honest with you bro it's like I, last year you know i heard your song and it's gonna i would not be here today if it wasn't for that song and i was just like i thought he was i thought it was like i thought he meant like at my show yeah. you know and he said but yeah man he was just like i had no emotions left in me i was one i was like i felt empty he said i felt nothing and then i heard your song and i finally felt something oh. he said so because of that he was like i kept listening to that song and after that, I realized what it was. He said, he said, there was something about the way it made me feel. And I had not felt anything in years. And like he said, and that, and that was my hope. He said, what I heard was hope. At that, po at that point, bro, at, the, at that moment, I realized I'm not just fucking making music. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I have a responsibility now, so, you know? So now when I, you know, I have that extra thought when I go to the studios, it's like, okay, fool, like, just, you know, don't, don't treat this as a joke, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, like, keep doing it for the same reasons right because uh i was doing it because i loved it you know yeah and uh just keep doing it because of that because that is important that's that has already proved to me that the power that that has our right? music exactly bro mm -hmm. so ever since then is you know and, and 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 every now and then you know people will be like hey you know like i was going through a hard time your music has helped me keep my head up you know and if even though those stories it's like damn, you know at that time what song was do you know what song he was referring to five hours oh okay yeah five hours you know and um it's crazy because like you know the song it has nothing to do with like with 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 it's a love story you mm -hmm. know it's a love story i wrote it for my for my wife you know mm -hmm. i wrote it for her but uh you know it's i guess the way people translate music you know yeah, their, per their perception exactly you know so yeah. like that's one thing i like about edms when mm -hmm. there's no lyrics it's like you can translate it however you want yeah you yeah. know you interpret so, it how, how, exactly. however yeah, you want. Exactly. It's like a painting. You know, it's like, you know what? Yeah. This painting makes me feel sad. It makes this fool feel yeah. happy. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, it's just how you interpret it. You know, and it all comes down to the emotions people feel all the time. For sure. You know? Now, when, when you when you make music, how do you how do you determine what gets released and what does it? <laughs> <laughs> Not just me. Wish, <laughs> it used to be like that. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I could put my foot down and say, 
I feel strong. I want this song out now. Yeah. You know, yeah. obviously there has to be a very valid reason why I would tell man tell management no, tell a label no. There has to be a very valid reason, right? Like and and who knows what that reason is? But like you know, for nowadays it's a lot smarter to 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 wait until everything falls into place, right? Until you have marketing, until you have a good label, <clears throat> until you have a good person to sing on it, another artist, you know. Because that's that's there's many reasons why I won't release a song. One is because we're still waiting on the main artist to record this one. You know, this one is because we gotta get the sample cleared. You know, that's why I try to avoid samples real because yeah. it's tough. But like sometimes, you know, like I want to revamp an old song. It's like when we're trying to wait, we're waiting on them, this is and that. So it's like it, it all comes down to the stars aligning, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know they- I like I said, let's say let's say I'm waiting for, for, for a sample to clear because you know, I love this old song and we can't get a hold of them or we did, but they stopped responding. I'll be like, fuck it. Let's just put it out for free. All right. Let's yeah. put it out for free. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's no marketing, you know, like I'm, you know, it's, it, it, mm. it, that's why I'll, I'll, that's when I, that, that, that'll be me overriding everyone saying, I'm want this out <laughs> now. But at the same time, it's like, damn, but like, I don't want to miss the opportunity of having a good support, yeah. putting it on an actual label where it belongs and having their support. So yeah, yeah man, I mean, yeah, like it, it, it all depends on each song, you know. But like I said, I do have the power to say, no, I want this out. Yeah. But, you know, you're better off just kind of waiting and being patient. Making sure that everything, that the stars are, are aligned exactly, properly. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you got the right, you got the right machine supporting a song. You yeah. Know? Nowadays, you need so much. It's not how, just. How often do you release music, mm-hmm. that being said? So, so if, say, let's say everything, if in a perfect world, I'd have a song coming out once every two weeks. Right, mm-hmm. but you know we don't live in a perfect world. So yeah. <laughs> there's always there's, there's always something, and then like songs. I mean, we have like a schedule, right? And like, and, and as soon as those dates approach, like if if there's certain things that aren't aligned, then we end up pushing it back. We end up pushing it back. Pushing you know, it's not until like you said, all the stars are aligned that we finally announce it. And now the world knows, and now that's because we know for a fact it's coming out on that day. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I mean, there's. Every every song is different, and it's crazy <laughs> how much music uh, nowadays, is, right? Especially is, like everybody's releasing three songs a week. Some, oh, sometimes, yeah, they do that, yeah, know? man. And look, there's different. There's ways to do it. You know, there's yeah. ways to do it, but it's kind of like you have to like. I feel like you know my next label that you know that I sign with. I'm gonna tell them, look, like I might want to release a song a week. You know, yeah. as long as they're down, as long as their their team can keep up, as long as I can keep up, say we got to do music, they want to do music videos for everyone. As long as everyone's on the same page, you know, I mean, I think a week is a little crazy. Probably <laughs> like give everyone three weeks, maybe, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's why you also got to understand, you know, it's a, you know, just it's a lot of work. Yeah, man. bro. There's a whole team behind, you know, behind marketing and, and yeah, man, I'm putting together a music video, you know, getting a director, getting a mood board, getting, <clears> you know, storyline is like, it's a lot. A it's yeah. a lot of work it's that fun. goes in. yeah it's fun. oh yeah and, uh, we had fun like when we did that video oh that, that was, was dope bro that, that was, was dope so i remember fun. you know the brainstorming for the ideas and you know that that for me i feel like it um i might keep that concept going yeah because i love that concept of like some artists jamming out next to me yeah and um you know me kind of just inviting them over yeah you know, i feel like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna keep doing that for that, a couple that was more pretty videos. sick dude you got to see oh, the video yeah, it's yeah. Bad. yeah i was there too it was oh that's cool. right you yeah. were there that's right was, that's right it dude. was a fun Day. Now, as the oro, como como the oro, ¿cuándo fue que te cayó el 20? Que, que, que eras famoso. O sea, que dijiste, a la verga, like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? ¿Y cómo te cayó el 20? ¿Cómo te, yeah, ¿Cómo te cayó el 20? Like, I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't think it was like one moment. I feel like it was multiple moments. You think it built up like, mm. oh, today's better than And like, even, even, even like, okay, when I did this pop up in LA, like last year, I think it was in July, when did I do the pop up? It was July. It was hot. It was during the summer. Um, I didn't think that many people would show up. You know, like even then, like now, like even, even now, I like there's things that say, "Damn, like, it's I, I, like I have a lot of support." You know, I feel like the first time I ever had that feeling was when I got um, when I won my first DJ Mag. You mm-hmm. know, it's like top 100 DJs in the world. Yeah. You know, and um, I got the highest new entry, and I <laughs> I, I entered at 19, bro. Oh wow. fuck! Mm-hmm. And that That's year crazy. was just after that. That year was crazy, you know, because you know, seeing how 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 I can go to a country that I'm I don't I don't know anybody from that country, 
but i show up and they're like and they know me it's a trip bro it's just like (laughs) what the like it it goes back to me realizing what it is that i'm doing like damn i'm not just making music i'm connecting with the world bro you know yeah so it grows my sense of responsibility my responsibility and it's so cool that like you know going up the furthest in canada i've ever gone like edmonton and seeing that people know me there too you know going down (laughs) to australia going going to poland or switzerland and you know like it's just like russia you know wow. that's amazing bro like how how far music can travel and like you know to to see that's like hey you know the oral you know the show is sold out so it's like wow no way you know like it's amazing you know it's like it makes me want to post a tweet in that language you know hey hell yeah I'll see you guys there you know but it's like it, it, it's it's not because it's not because i don't want to think about you know, let's say Russia is because I never, never thought to think about them because I didn't think they knew me out there, you know? Yeah. But once you see that, yeah, they, they know you out there, you're just like, fuck, man, maybe I should tweet more in Russian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so That's cool, funny. man. And like, you know, even going down to South America, you know, where it's just like, damn, bro, like, I me hace mucha falta conocer to go out there, give more love, show more love. And like, you know, where like, and then there's Asia, you know, where it's like fucking Asia, bro. It's crazy. You're know, singing songs in Spanish. <laughs> That's like, fucking wow, wild, bro. bro. Like uh, it's beautiful, bro. That's so the power like of music. it's those those moments that I still get today. You know, that those, those feelings that like every now and then like me cae un, un momento where I'm just like, holy fuck, bro. Like I'm all the way out here. You know, like yeah. that's cool. Like Yeah, and I, and, and and yeah, maybe I'll never get to see the full picture of how exactly how how well recognized my music is. But from what I do get to see, I'm just like, wow. But I think that at the end of the day is is, is what keeps you humble, because because you're just, you're still doing it for the love. You're still doing it. Mm. You're not doing it for to be a you know because it makes you a superstar, or you're not doing it because you know you're doing it because you love it and because that's what what you feel, you know. And I think well, for me, it's still shocking that like well, the, what I'm doing right now, even like really people like this <laughs> that's, cool. <laughs> like, that's cool bro like i love yeah. this you know so it's mm-hmm. it, it it's great that people people like it because i love it you know and it's like you know i'm then and then i'm gonna keep doing it you know it's a great feeling and, and what's next for the oral like what do you well what's your goals i definitely i want to keep pushing the whole latin edm you know like because I, I feel like i'm at home doing that and there's so much like i said there's so much that that, that, that i feel latinos you know, even just Mexicans have to offer music, mm-hmm. and uh, especially in this in this in this EDM world, the electronic world. Um, you know, there's still a lot of um, yeah. There's a lot. I feel like there's a lot missing still. You know, it's like when it comes to Latin. I feel like we could have Latin EDM festivals. You know, yeah. yeah. Where it's like we could have both merge and and you know, obviously for that it's gonna take a while, but you know, little by little. You know, because, bro, Latinos, we love to rave. We like to rave, you know? Yeah, <laughs> we love sure. to rave, bro. I, like, I'd be going to, I'd be doing the festivals here in San Bernardino, you know, where you have, like, 70, 80,000 people. And it's just like, bro, there's Mexican flags everywhere. Oh, you know, not yeah. nomás Mexican flags, but, like, the Argentina, the Ecuador, all kinds of flags, you know? It's just like, they're Latinos. out there, you know? So it's like, there's a home for, for, for Latin music in, in the EDM world. Yeah, you think that ahorita, uh, uh, the time is perfect right now because mm. because how 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 mexican music has just fucking gone global you know mm-hmm. and and with your touch is just making it even bigger. more appealing and bigger more appealing it's to like, it's other like another masses. bridge like, literally yeah, for yeah you're definitely yeah you're definitely like a, a a bridge and a good one too uh to to take this music to to the russians you know <laughs> to like that kind of stuff definitely bro because you're yeah, marrying corridos allá. <laughs> <laughs> corridos, bro. bro one of the craziest one of the craziest images i ever got was um I went. I played South Korea and I played some cumbia out there, bro. Oh, wow. Everybody was getting down to it. Oh, I was like, hell yeah, bro! It's just like I can't believe I just witnessed this. Like when 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 we recorded the song con el de Camarón, I was thinking that's just cool. Like when this guy goes to like Europe, he's, they're gonna be singing our yeah, fucking song yeah, over there. Yeah, bro. Hell yeah, I that dropped, is yeah. fucking crazy, bro. bro. And like that that's that's why like for me, like, when it comes to language, I mean, like I feel like there's there's no language barriers in music bro i mean like we were yeah. all singing opagano style you know not too long ago yeah. we don't know what the hell it said but yeah. it's just it was a dope song who knows what he said but yeah. you know like it's like i feel like the language at True. the end of the day it doesn't matter bro because like i remember people were singing perdona man in uh in poland you know in poland like they don't they don't even speak english or they don't even speak spanish you know but yet like they sing perdona you know 
Crazy. So, you know, so yeah, that that shows me that like, there's music breaks barriers, like language barriers, you know. So, yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, I'll I'll, I'll continue to put messages in my music, but it's so cool to take it to a country that doesn't speak that language and they're singing it back to me. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's been the biggest festival you you've done, man. Um, show. you know what? So so biggest festival, like 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 known festival, would have to be between Tomorrowland. And uh, like in Belgium or or electronic dance music, uh, Electric Daisy Festival, uh, uh, Electric Daisy Carnival, EDC, Vegas. Yeah, in Vegas. Um, those are like mm-hmm. the more famous festivals. But I've done some festivals, bro, where I'm just like, I can't see the end. Okay, you know, wow. where like there was one festival that I did in Spain. I think it was Tenerife or somewhere. Um, they shut down all the stages, and it was just my stage. No, so man. everybody came to my stage and i was new for i was like this is this is the most people i've ever played in front of wow. i know for a fact this is the most people and i was just like i don't even know how many fucking people are here you, you know you, didn't, you saw you didn't see yeah where it's just it's it's infinite bro infinite i was just like i can't see the end you know and like i played edc here and and, and, and like it's just crazy how far back it goes you know where like I'm, you still get nervous Hell yeah, bro! Yeah. <laughs> you know one thing. One thing that's funny about me is when I get, ner- I yawn when I get nervous. <laughs> oh. I start yawning, bro. So like before my big shows, I'm like yawning, and people are like, "You're really tired right now." And I'm like, "No, I'm not tired. Bro. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous." Yeah, but it looks like that's, I'm like bored, like you know, yawning, reaction. bro. Like, you know, I get really nervous, and 100, uh, percent bro, because you know, for me, I don't want to let the people down. Yeah. You know, and I know I can make mistakes because I know I'm myself. I'm human. You know. Right. And uh, I just hope that I don't make myself look like an idiot up there, <laughs> you know. But then once the music starts, like some ah, you know, que el CD rayado o algo, no. No, you know what? Over time, over time, you know, when when I would fuck up, and you know, I have I have fucked up, I fuck up quite often, quite often, you know. And uh, I've learned to em- to embrace my fuck ups, you know. Yeah. Like I love saying like, yeah, "Oops," you know, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. I, I stopped the wrong one, yeah. I stopped the one that everyone's listening to. I'm like, "Oh shit." Yeah, you know it's like you know, hold on give me one second and fucking put it back yeah. you know i'll make it like a little moment you know where it's yeah. just like takes care of that you know like i'm human whatever you know like, i'm not perfect it is what it is as long as i don't keep doing it right then that's when yeah. people are like hey what's up fool? you fucking suck <laughs> Killing our vibe bro <laughs> no nah, but yeah like every now and then you know it is what it is you know you fuck up but um place where you won't would like to go in the future man you know i still haven't i still haven't gone to africa bro so I haven't gone to Africa, yeah, and I, uh, I've never gone to Alaska, you know. So yeah. it's like, um, yeah. where goals. else? Yeah, bro. There's, there's just, there's still so many places, you know. Antarctica. Antarctica, Antarctica. yeah, actually, yeah. I want to go over there. Hell yeah, play for the penguins. Is there a ray over there? <laughs> yeah, I think there. Diplo just went over there. He played like on a boat or something, like oh, in, in Antarctica. Some Metallica went out there. They, they, they played like on that's a crazy, bro. Iceberg. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> that's fucking oh, that's, wild. Though. That's some mm-hmm. other world's mm-hmm. big things, man. For me, I think one of the one of my things I just I've always wanted my music to um to become nostalgic, right? And the way music is nostalgic for me is um like my family parties. You know, the music that I heard at my family parties, like when I hear them now, I'm just like, damn, like this is a special place in my heart. And uh so my goal wasn't wasn't to make music that would end up on the radio. My goal was to make music that they would play at a quinceañera. Yes. Can say, yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. And I remember, I remember one time I got my. It was the first video that they sent me, where my song "Bailar" was the baile sorpresa of a quinceañera. Oh shit! And I was just, after that, I was just like, "Fuck it, I made it." You know, <laughs> I was like, "I fucking made it," because now she's gonna forever remember that song. I was like, oh, yeah. "Yeah," and yeah. then like that was a moment for the family, you know, and like that was for me. That was it. Like boom yeah. like bucket list check. You know, yeah. and uh, it's so cool now to see so many that come about where now people are using like Yolas Pongo <laughs> you know and like that's a fucking <laughs> banger bro thank you so that much that is bro. one of the fucking baddest fucking songs like, like oh yeah 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 dude that is such <laughs> an amazing <laughs> ass song bro <laughs> thank you bro thank yeah. you and, and then uh, the scenery is like a yeah. quinceanera right yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. It, cause so I remember right so um La Chona right yeah. La Chona yeah. is where the inspiration came from and uh I remember I had the crazy idea of saying, imagine like the Chona 2.0, yeah. <laughs> right? And um, we got really cool with Caesar, right? He does all the marketing, and uh, he was just like, I oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm gonna talk to, I'm gonna talk to 
El Jefe, you know, I'm gonna see if he's down to maybe let we just take a meeting, you know? Yeah. Um, because I think he 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 was able to envision what I had in mind too. You know, where if you just think about it just like that, like a DJ collaborating with the Norteño group, that's crazy. Like what the yeah. hell, right? Yeah. Pero it was not really necessarily a, a performance where I was like, my collab is going to happen in the studio, right? And um, it's going to be La La Chona, you know? Like, I didn't want them to have to learn anything new. I just wanted to be like, like, remember what you did with La Chona? We're going to do it again. But this time, we're mm-hmm. going to add some electronic components, you know? And obviously, like, that didn't just take one meeting. You know, the first meeting I told them, I was like, hey, like, if you guys are open to the idea, yeah, you know, I'm going to go study your music and I'll come back and when I feel like I'm ready and I'll present you the idea. And one of the craziest things was that they were open-minded enough to say, we're interested. Yeah. You know? We're like, yeah. bro, Tucanes, they don't have to make new music ever again, bro. They could just tour with whatever they have now <laughs> and they'll be set. You know? Yeah, like, they're, sure. they're, they're living legends. Yeah. And, um, but they were interested. So I That's said, so cool. awesome. Like, all right, cool. I'll be back. You know? So I studied their music, bro, for like a year and a half. And, wow. um, you know. Oh, is that long? Yeah, yeah. No, wow. but the song took me four mm-hmm. years to produce. Oh, nice. You know? And, um. You know, along along uh, throughout those four years, you know, it was about me going back and forth with um, with like Cesar, you know, like mm-hmm. and like talking about you think they'd like this, you think they you know this is not, and I made a couple of versions, bro. I made like and, no and way. not just versions, but like a three. I, there, I think there's three different songs. I remember I produced one, and I sent it, and I don't think it made it past Caesar. So I was like, okay, cool. I get, I get it. You know, it's like, yeah. okay. And I heard it again. I was like, okay, yeah, actually, you're, I don't think this is good enough. So I scrapped it. Then I produced another one, and then a third one, right? And then um, I remember, I remember when I finally found out what his guitar was because I could not get that guitar sound. Yeah. For the longest time, I remember. Um, uh, uh, I from I got this from Mario. He told me he was like, no one knows guitar is bajo sexto. Yeah. Yeah. After that, I went home. And I Googled Bajo Sexto and then I, I just listened to Puro Bajo Sexto on YouTube yeah. and I was able to recreate that sound, bro. Oh, and wow. when I had that on a keyboard, I was like, oh, hell yeah, bro. With that right there, that's when the new idea started developing, What the song that ended up becoming Yo Las Pongo Today. Wow. So I produced it and then um, I remember I had already had the, the, the bass rhythm on lock and everything, bro. And I produced it out and then I was like, boom, this is going to, this has to be it. This has <laughs> to be it, you know? And then um, I remember I had also brought up the idea of remixing La Chona. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And they sent me the stems. I was like, hell yeah. Now I get to listen to each instrument by itself. Yeah. So uh, so I was able to recreate a lot of their their their, their, their rhythms, their sounds, choose, choosing the same hi-hats, you know, like, and, and like, todo, bro. I was just like hyper-focusing on everything to when I sent it back, you know, I was just like, okay, cool. Let's put the remix idea to the side. What do you think of this? All you got to yeah. do is just re-record what, what I did. And then Mario, if you if you like the idea, if you don't, if you're down to write on top of it, we I remember I had wrote a little a demo with my boy Mafio, mm. and uh, and he was just like, I fuck with this, I fuck with it. He was just like, we're gonna get in the studio and record it. Wow. And yeah, bro, wow, but all that so cool. t- it took so much time, you know. Yeah. Where like I remember just focusing on the puro bajo sexto, like or the guitar that took forever, bro. Like I yeah. was just I wanted to just I mean, wanted it, to sound it's like a masterpiece, bro. It's a masterpiece, <laughs> Thank exactly. you, bro. definitely, bro. As well. I think Thank it was, you. It was an amazing as song. You know, bro. It's, you know what's crazy for me, uh, how long it took me to produce what I did. And then how fast they recorded it. I was like, yeah, damn, bro. that's crazy, bro. Like, I was like, it's because you were in their world now, course, you know? Of course, bro. You but it's like, world. yeah, it's what they do, you know? Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's 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 amazing to see them work, bro. And uh, <laughs> one of the crazy. coolest things, bro, I, I know I knew Mar- I know Mario was flexing on me, bro. Because he's like, oh, cool. Once we were done with the studio, in the studio, he was like, let me show you upstairs real quick. I, I was, went up there, all the BMI awards, a whole oh. all of them. And I was just like, I think this lo- this was low-key flexing on me, you know? <laughs> so, I was just like, you know, in my head, I was just like, cool. Like, like I think he's showing me, like, hey, this is who you're fucking with, you know? Yeah, and I'm sure. just like, damn, it just reassured me. I was like, okay, I got to take one shot of bro, because yeah. I want one of those awards up there because of me, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah, it's just sure. like, and, and and it's so cool how, how they were super excited for the track. And, I, it, bro, like, I was already playing it, and it worked. Yeah, it worked. I was like, "Oh, this is this is gonna be so good." And and they were down to record a video, and um, to me, bro, the fact that that someone like Tucanes was open minded 
to to make something that is like modern like today yeah um it's it's amazing bro that's why i have so much respect for mario he's an amazing as he's, yeah, he's, he's a, a legend, legend, bro. legend bro. The, bro his writing is insane you know and um you know and there's some we went on that bro we went on yeah. that i remember I, when we got to record a song with them way back in the day and 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 we had a session over there at a studio and then i remember we were eating tacos because they brought tacos right now i was sitting right directly across from him and I'm sitting there the whole time thinking, I'm eating tacos with Mario Quintero <laughs> at his studio. Like, mm. if somebody would have told me this when I was 13 years old, bumping his cassettes in my bedroom, like, I would have never fucking believed it, dude. Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm sure you felt the same thing, you know bro, what I mean? I couldn't even yeah. grasp it, bro. I couldn't grasp it because, like, you know, when I remember when I told my, my parents, you know, I was just like, I'm going to make a song. I'm going to try, like, they're interested. I'm going to try to make a song. They were just like, what? I was just like, I'm going to make it happen. Like I'm gonna make it happen. I was like, and and and, and I didn't know how, but I was gonna make it happen. I was just Fair like, enough. I know for a fact I'm just gonna work my ass off for this to happen. And um, I remember when I finally sent like the once they recorded it, I remember I showed them the the song like the demo version. I was just like, that's not me. That's actually him playing the guitar. That's the drummer. That's the bass. I was like, now I just gotta mix it. But it's like, but that's them. You know, and they were just like, him? wow. My dad was like, all right, Miko, hell yeah, I knew you could do it. You know, it's like. I'm cool. sure that that's amazing. I mean, I, I see that how proud your parents are, bro. That, oh yeah, that it, that's that's. A, I mean, and that's one of the one one of the I think one of the best things about getting connected, reconnected with my culture, and applying it to what I'm doing, is that all the perks, all the all the all the extra things were like, because I started doing Mexican music, I got to tour with the the, the Mexican soccer team. Yeah, you know, where it's yeah. like my dad loves the soccer yeah, team, yeah, so I can bring them. You know, so it's like, and then también like trabajando contigo, bro. Like, yeah. bro, like that's that's the that's the beauty of me t deciding to take that path, where like I get to like it's not it's music that my family can enjoy, yeah. and like you know it, another cool thing is that you know seeing my suegra, you know my my yeah. my wife's mom. Saying like, oh, esa canción está muy bonita, you know, yeah. muy bonita. Where I know if I would have just kept making puro techno, rather, she would probably not ever puro listen punchies, to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's like, well, like I get, to, you know, the song. She kept telling me to keep replaying the song that we did. Yeah, you wow, know? that's awesome. So it's like, and then like her sisters, my wife's sisters, my sister in laws, like they used to go to your guys's bailes, you know, like up oh, north. Shit, yeah, you know, and wow. like uh, so when I brought them out to the, the the show we did in San Francisco, like they were starstruck, you know. And that's it's, like, so it's awesome. so cool. That's like that. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm I'm fucking with shit. That's like we can all connect to, mm, and, yeah. and like, and it's exciting, bro. It's you know, and like, and you're making our this culture grow too. You know, I mean, <laughs> and and. and Shit, you're making like a sub genre, pretty much of of what you do, you know, with 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 the Mexican music, and that's fucking amazing, bro. Because you're putting a lot of people on, bro. You're taking <laughs> yeah. our our music is going across across the world now, you know. That's, you know, that's, you know uh, what's cool? I've seen I've seen a couple a couple people post like sometimes they comment on my Instagram posts. Um, they say, yo, like I don't know Mexican <laughs> music, but you better believe I was fucking going ham, you know. Like I fuck with this now, you know. Like and that's. That's one thing. Excuse me. That's one thing that I know for a fact. Like our music, bro, is uplifting. Yeah. You know, like as soon as soon as like that's why I think La Chona was so successful. Yeah. Because it's not about what he said. It's not about. It was about the vibe. Yeah. It's you know, infectious, La dude. Chona. Yeah. That's why you were hearing it all around the world. Yeah. You know? yeah. When you hear that style, you know, I cannot wait to take Yo Las Pongo mm. to the to the other side of the world. You know, like I'm going. I'm going to Tokyo. I'm going to Bangkok. You know, in a couple of months, and like I can't wait to play that. That's you know? amazing. I can't wait to play. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait to play. I can't wait to play those songs, bro. Because it's like I know for a fact that like it, like people don't have to understand the the words. Yeah, it's just the rhythms and the rhythms. You know, like bro, that's what that's what makes people move. If you play our song out there, please send me a video. Oh hell yeah, you better. Bro, you better do it, bro. I want to see Los Chinitos <laughs> fucking singing our song, yeah, yeah, bro. bro. That's hell gonna yeah. be amazing, bro. Yeah, I think uh, the one I'm doing in Bangkok is gonna be a big festival. Yeah. That when is that one? Uh, I think it's March. I think March. March, yeah. Pack your bags, Nicolón. Oh, <laughs> we're going to Bangkok. Let's yeah. Go. I'm, I'm Bangkok. Doing, I'm doing, um, I think I'm doing Zook in Tokyo. That's going to be, it's like a club, but dope. So yeah. Dope. Oh, yeah. You, you get tired of the traveling or you're or you still good with it? You know what? I was just talking about traveling with, with, with this guy over here, with Edgar, my videographer. And I was telling him, I was like, because we had just gotten through TSA. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, you know, a lot of people complain about this shit, but it's like, but I feel at home, bro. Like, sure. this is what I do. Like, yeah. I'm so used to TSA. And I told him, I was like, if anything, I feel so safe once I get past TSA. <laughs> 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 I was like, I feel so safe, bro. Like, you know, I could just post up in the corner. I don't got to worry about some motherfucker bringing a gun in here yeah. or nothing. You know, it's like, I just feel True so that. safe. And like traveling, like, 
like it's just become my life it's become yeah. you know like it took me a long time you know at first i was just like fuck you know like we're gonna get oh i got the tsa but yeah. now when i go to tsa i'm like oh, okay cool i got fuck with this you know like yeah. it's what i do and uh i remember one time we took like a pretty long break and i remember i texted the chat i was just like i fucking miss tsa oh it was during covid <laughs> During COVID, oh, during the shit, lockdown, yeah. I was just like, damn, I miss, I miss going to TSA, 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 bro. Yeah. Like, I miss that <laughs> shit, you know? And, um, yeah, touring gets rough, you yeah. know? You get, like, you got you got 30 minutes to sleep, not even real sleep, and uh, you get on this uncomfortable flight that's not even, it's too long to to to, to stay stay awake, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, too, it's short too short to, to get a good sleep, yeah. you know? So it's like... You know, and you have three connections and then like you have an hour drive, you know, yeah, those get rough, right? Yeah, those those get tiring. rough and, you know, but that's, that's, the, that's part of the show. Part of it. Mm -hmm. It's part of the show. I mean, you know? shit, it beats the nine to five, it's you know? hundred percent, bro. And like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah, I've also talked to him about that too. It's like, it's crazy how this, this, this like gets rough, but it's like, bro, we get to see the world, you know? You do. We're going to, you know, I know one day, you know, if, if, if life allows me to, you know, I'll wake up one day when I'm 70 and look back and be like, damn, I miss those days, you know? For sure. So, so just that just gave me like a little bit of terror, like <laughs> thinking about that. No, nah, but it's like that's why I just like like, like I'm trying to live the, my this moment to the fullest. Yeah, you know, I try and I, I try pay attention to everything so that when I remember this moment, I don't just remember this conversation. You know, yeah. I remember what it. I was seeing. You know, I remember like what I was drinking. I remember like uh, how the couch felt and everything. That way, when I think back, there's plenty for me to think about. You know, so it's like you start you start doing that, and then you start to be more in the moment. Yeah, you know, yeah. What what's a typical day off for Dioro? Uh, it depends. If bro. there's any, it depends. It depends, <laughs> right? It depends. Like if, if I have my kids, you know, then like we'll for sure put on some movies, and you know, and sometimes I have, you know my kids sometimes they're just like let's go to Disneyland, you know. I'm like, damn, man, my feet hurt. <laughs> 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 you know, we have the same thing. Hey, By yeah. the way, I've been doing it. Did you do it? I've been doing it, bro. bro. I got the ball, bro. That, that shit hurts. See? That shit hurts, it hurt, bro. But it feels good. But if, yeah, bro. Yeah. I can I can tell when I first start doing it. Sorry, we're changing something yeah. real quick. <laughs> no. We're talking about our plantar fasciitis. We're yeah, flat yeah. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. So, uh, but yeah, bro. When you first start doing it, it hurts, but then like after a while, like it stops, you know. But I can you can feel like where it's like you feel a little get, the como que los yeah, bro. Muscles, like it relieves it, bro. It's crazy. But yeah, that's that's one thing that I that I, that I that I had to I had to get surgery on one foot too, bro. Like all the jumping and then the weight doesn't help. So, pero no entendemos ir a estamos comando micheladas <laughs> con sal, <laughs> fucking water weight, yeah. bro. No man. Nah, but yeah, my chingo. days off. Um, you know, I really I really try. You know, uh, <clears throat> try try to just get fucking. I try not to do anything, bro, because I really just want like one of the things is really getting getting as much rest as I can because yeah. of my feet. Um, but like, bro, like I love just like watching, catching up on shows that people have recommended and, you know, sometimes about my family over, we'll have game nights, bro. Like, you know, I had a game night the other night and, uh, just tranqui, bro, tranqui, you chill. know, super, Relax. super chill. If I have like a number of days off then like, you know, me and my girl will go out to try a restaurant we've been wanting to try, Yeah, Good. you know, but it's super, super like. Like you're, we're not gonna go out to to, to you know we really just, and we're okay with it you know yeah. Yeah. I sometimes I ask her be like do you mind us just, just staying home she's like yeah, yeah. I was like okay, cool you know like cause well, that's cool she's the homebody with you too yeah yeah because the magic and they no let's go out yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know one thing I started doing is like I, two 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 times a year I I've started doing trips yeah for sure like because it's like no mom is like you know like I want to also kind of like enjoy time off like we went to Zion the other, the other wow. like for my birthday. You know, and I took my team, you know, so it's like kind of like, it's like kind of like we kind of still work out there, but it's like kind of like we're working yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm blessed enough to, to be able to do something like that. That's beautiful, bro. You know, That's We awesome. just came back from Big Bear, <clears throat> you know, I took the whole team and uh, yeah. You guys have fun, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, we we got to take some trips again, bro. Gotta, I know we do. <laughs> Dude, we haven't taken a trip. <laughs> it's, it's it's hard, bro. It's hard. Like for the longest time, I always said we were gonna do that. A team trip. That, uh, I mean, yeah, we gotta yeah. take a team trip. Yeah, yeah. We all take it's like yeah. a retiro, like See? a retreat, bro. Do it for the company, you know, like and just, you know, and it's cool, man, because it's like it really, you know, I never thought I'd ever get to see something like Zion. Yeah. You know, to yeah. be honest. Uh, right before I didn't even want to go I was like fuck I really did this man like you know like where, like, where have I was like it's my time off I could just spend it at home but no honestly I'm glad I went yeah. I got really sick 
Oh, oh shit. I fucking had a really shitty fever. Fuck. I was like, oh man, I was really trying to enjoy it. And I really did, right? Yeah. I really, I don't know if you, you know about Zion? No, no. What? It's these crazy canyons, bro. And like you go through it, but it's like water up to here. Oh shit. Bro. Yeah, and then some places the water goes up to like your shoulders, bro. Back out, Freezing temperatures too. But it's beautiful, bro. It's beautiful. The canyons, towering canyons. Oh shit. And Where's that, that at? It's in Utah. Utah. It's like it's like an hour and a half north of. Is Vegas. that with those those weird looking rocks and shit? Yes, yeah, yes, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, it's like a like a national park, and uh, it was the first time I ever saw anything like that. Yeah, you know, and I was just like, holy shit, like I get it. Yeah, you know, it's just like I felt. It was just I can't you can't put it into words. Can't put it into words, and and and, and I saw what like I looked up on the internet, like on 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 Google, like Google. There, I was like, damn, that looks pretty cool. Seen it in person, I was like, holy shit. Now I look at those pictures, I'm like, I know what it feels like to yeah, be there. <laughs> to it's a be whole there. different panel, must be very healing. The cameras don't do justice, you know? Like you're so, another planet. Yeah, bro, look, I'm getting fucking teary-eyed. Because it's so fucking, like, it's so special being there. And I was just like, I want to, now I want to see the trees. Yeah. The sequoia trees. Sequoia trees. Yeah. The redwoods, the ones you could drive through. Yeah. I got to see those now, Dude. you know? It's gonna I got to see the Grand the Canyon. Naturaleza. It's just the healing. Yeah, because it it's healing. like, it, it, you, you see it in pictures, yeah. But there's nothing like being there because it's the grand, right? The grand, the grand, the grand, the grand yeah. scale of things. Yeah. So like now, yeah, I try to do that every now and then. You know, sometimes I get to see things because I travel. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I got to see like the the Colosseum and all that mm -hmm. in Rome and all that. That's cool, man. History, I love history. It's crazy, you know. But it's like there's some things here in the U.S. that like are also worth take worth yeah make, making the time to go see it if you if you can you know yeah and um so yeah you know i'm trying to go see the the pyramids in egypt oh yeah Giza. those oh, two yeah. that's bucket list for me bro those two and honestly oh, i know man. for a fact they're massive bro because i remember i remember another thing that i thought as well was the the i never really i never knew i didn't expect the fucking uh the the the, 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 the eiffel tower yeah oh yeah when I went up to that motherfucker, I was like, "Holy shit, bro! This motherfucker's massive." It's big, right? Yeah, like, and I didn't think it was gonna be that. And then, but when I saw the Colosseum, like in yeah. uh, in Rome, I was like, "Oh, it's kind of small." Oh, <laughs> you know? oh no so way! Like, it's crazy, bro. Yeah, oh, like shit. no, the, the Stonehenge. Oh, Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. I went. I was like. Perspective I, think, I think between ten of us we can move these, you know. How much you bitch? No, no, I'm just kidding. No, but I saw them. I was like, okay, I honestly thought they were gonna be bigger, but whatever. Yeah, but, but uh, you got but to see yeah, them. Yeah, and then like there's certain things that like, like you know, when I went to go see the Great Wall of China, you know, oh, that was like, amazing. that's amazing, bro. Like, getting to it was 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 the scary mm -hmm. part, you yeah. know. And then like it's crazy. Like you look over one edge, it's like fucking. You, you die if you well, fall I mean, over, bro. And like, it's not like there's like a gate. It's like it's like, bro. It's just a brick laid down, and that's supposed to stop you. Oh my god! You know, I'm so going it's over. scary, bro. Luckily Crazy. for me, uh, it was a foggy day, so I couldn't see how high down. Right? Oh, yeah. so, like I'm afraid of heights. So yeah, yeah bro. And um, but yeah, and, and as far as everything that I visited, I think the most beautiful thing I've visited so far is La Basilica. Oh yeah, that's amazing. I got to visit that too. Bro, there was something there, bro. There's something that I like, guess hey, huffing just, and like, puffing to get up yeah. there, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't actually, I didn't do, I didn't do that where the no, la Spanish la Virgen. Oh, you didn't. Oh, go that, no, I didn't bro, go. All the way. We didn't have the time. We were trying to be brave. We went up there with no hombre and the almost. But I remember when they were showing me everything, I was just like, whoa, like se sentía the energy, bro. I was like, wow, there's really something special about this place. You know, when they were telling me about the Nino, okay, they would, you know, they 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 dragged, they made him walk to his. Mm. Where they were gonna kill him in his grave, you know, and like and like the the seeing everything so insane, bro. And um I'm so glad we 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 almost didn't go. Mm. You know, because it was right before my, my set at EDC. Yeah. And I knew it was gonna mean the world to my wife. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna go. Fuck it. Yeah. You know, even if it just if it even means we go straight to, you know, we, we we skip eating, whatever. And we went, bro, and like I remember even the the we had like um the, some of our team. Uh, there's this guy named Damien, right? Like, I took him as, like, a security guard and stuff. And then, um, it was the first time I ever met him. But he had a spiritual awakening. There? At the, yeah, at, bro. And wow. I was, it was it was amazing, bro, because he told me, he was just like, bro, like, this, he's like, you have no idea what you, like, what just happened to me right now, you know? And it's so cool because it was the only time I really met him. And, like, but yet, like, every now and then, now we're connected because of that. Wow, that's you awesome. Know? Yeah, man. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's just definitely something if you have an opportunity to see La Basilica. Yeah, I got to, have you been there? Yeah, it's an amazing. Nice. I, we got to go there once. Este, I, I try to go también. Like, as much as, you know, we, like, como dices, que, que you're on tour, I always like, to go, let's go check it out. And they're like, ah, I'm 
gonna chill in the hotel. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm guilty of that too. But I, I, <laughs> I try to get out. Like when there's okay, I, I the pyramids or that kind of stuff in Mexico. I, I'm always at those fucking places. I love. Oh that yeah, shit, now, now, yeah, definitely, bro. <laughs> and now, now it's like, especially since I've been the more once you start doing it, you want to do it more and more. Yeah. Yeah. So like right now I'm on a kick where it's like if I'm going somewhere and there's a monument there or there's something it's like okay get me on the first flight there so that I do get some rest and then I have enough energy to time. go and check it out yeah. you know now I'm planning now I'm mm -hmm. making time you know <laughs> but um but yeah bro I mean I'm spoiled bro I'm spoiled <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky I'm lucky I that's get to do shit like life, that bro man. yeah man I get to that's what I mean like I you know it's one of the, the perks of of you know working hard you get to travel and. I, I always say the same thing. Like if I'm, you know, if I'm somewhere, somewhere cool, or I'm doing something cool, I always think. Or if I'm on my phone, be like, music, baby, music. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is music. Got music got us yeah. here, you know? Oh yeah, bro. This. And it's, it's, it, oh man, it's, a, it's, it's crazy how, you know, you look back and you know, you think, you think about what, what, what really is music, and it's really all the hard work you put into it too, you know, like, because it's like to, to, for me to get to where I'm at. You know, you don't really see it as work, yeah. right? Do you remember when you first picked up a guitar? Do you remember? Do you remember that? Like, it's like who knew? Like, damn, like that was what that was gonna lead to. You know, like how many times you were gonna play that guitar? How many times you were going to 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 try to make a song? And then once you finally made a song, how many times you're going to make a song? You know, and like Before anything happens. everything, and it's just like it's crazy what it all leads to, and 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 I I wish you know I wish I had everything I did like in a hard drive, you know, just yeah. to just see how big that hard drive is, because I know <laughs> I know I know I know that you know to 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 do what you guys have done to to for any artist to to everything that it takes, you know how like what 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 music is, you know like the bundle of it. Where it's all the hard work, all the practice to even get to sound. Deceptions. Uh, everything, bro. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. like how the ups and downs where you're like, damn, you know what? Maybe I suck uh, at this yeah. shit. <laughs> you know? Maybe, maybe I should just get a regular job. Yeah, you know? Kind of it's, it, and and it's, 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 it's insane, you know? And um, yeah, I like to think about that because like, you know, I like, I really don't want to forget where I came from. And I don't think I ever will, but, you know. Oh, for sure, you're grounded. You're, mm -hmm. That's good, man. That's awesome, bro. La neta, te, te deseamos... Pues todo el pinche de éxito. Ya lo tienes todo el éxito, pero bueno. más éxito, güey. Mucha salud, mucho, mucho yeah. éxito, este, mucho amor. Uh, you, you know, thank este, you. Y, y pues thank you so much for your friendship, bro. Y, y, por, you, bro. y por creer en nosotros, you bro. You know, you know, whatever you need, bro. Whatever you need, you just hit me up, bro. <laughs> Igualmente, Very inspirational, so bro. bro. Honestly, this <laughs> conversation was something else. This is amazing, bro. Thank you so much for, yeah. for coming down to us. Thank you for bien. making the time, bro. And, thank you for making the time. Este, pues good luck in all your in Gracias. all your thank endeavors you so all your tours all the music you're releasing bro you're a badass y, y, thank, thank you so much brother Gracias, padre. the overall thank y'all thank you brother yes sir Visita de lujo. Vámonos, recio. <laughs>